Hi, I'm Dr. Chad Larson. Thanks for joining me in another episode of Keep It Real. So one of the main points of the show, uh, if you've been watching for a while, is that I read a lot of uh, clinical studies, uh, research studies, medical journals, scientific journals, and every now and again I'll come across a study that I think would be relevant to the average healthcare consumer and they might find it uh, helpful or interesting for their own you know, personal health and life. And so um, we've talked on many occasions about the importance of the gut microbiome and how this whole universe of bacteria and our gastrointestinal tract is really important to our general health. And when that gut microbiome is healthy, it allows multiple organ systems, including things as far away from the gut like the brain. We know that there's very intimate and important relationships between the health of the gut bacteria, the gut microbiome, and the brain, and, and then lots of other parts of the body, including the immune system and um, the cardiovascular system. It's where we're amazingly dependent upon um, our gut microbiome. It's very, very important. And so that leads to um, a discussion I want to have today, and that is the way that the gut microbiome really influences uh, the metabolites or kind of the breakdown products of not only the foods that we eat, but the supplements that we take. Think of you know different vitamins and minerals and herbs and stuff that you take. Those um, nutrients are are. Um, really um, influenced by the gut microbiome. And that leads me to a study that I recently learned about that has actually helped me to understand a little bit more uh, detailed about the breakdown process of a really important botanical that I use myself and that I also very frequently recommend to patients. And so I'll get to that in just a moment. But um, let's take a step back and talk about um, some basic functions in the gastrointestinal tract. So when we consume foods, these foods are partially metabolized and broken down and utilized by the gut microbiome. And then um, once it goes through the gut microbiome, these nutrients get absorbed into the circulation and then they pass through the liver. And then the liver goes through two different phases of detoxification. They call phase one and phase two. And they have different uh, properties, different functions, and they really help to uh, break down certain chemicals and substances that we consume and then your body knows uh, what to do with those nutrients. Sometimes these um, metabolites are basically made as waste to go out through urination or to go out through the, gastrointest the gastrointestinal tract. Um, so there's ways that the body has to break down these substances and uh, so that we have proper utilization and elimination of, the, of their metabolites. So that takes me to uh, a really important nutrient that I recommend medicinally uh, very frequently, and that's a botanical called curcumin. And so curcumin is a kind of the main active constituent of the spice turmeric. So there's this, you know, Asian or Indian spice uh, turmeric that uh, has been around in human food consumption for probably thousands of years. It goes way, way back. It's been used for a very, very long time um, as kind of a flavor enhancer and just an overall kind of, uh, you know, medicinal health values. But it wasn't until you know modern science came around that they really started to study the um, components of turmeric and they found that curcuminoids and in general we just call it curcumin these curcuminoids render uh, a whole host of positive benefits for the system i've actually talked about curcumin in past episodes uh, more than once and this particular nutrient or botanical extract um, does three things really, really well. It's a very strong antioxidant. We've talked about um, oxidation and inflammation in the past. It's a strong anti-inflammatory and helps to modulate um, the activity of the immune system. So it does these things um, very powerfully and actually lots of other things as well, but that's kind of a general kind of short list of the basic uh, contributions that it has in the way that it affects the, the human body. Um, but I learned recently about the different forms of supplements of curcumin. And 
there's um, a couple different forms that I want to mention just so you are making an informed decision when you're deciding between what type of curcumin supplementation you want to have and um, there's one form of curcumin that is blended with a, a phospholipid um, phosphatidylcholine and phosphatidylcholine is an interesting substance. It's a, it's a fat soluble su substance. And the reason why they put that with the curcumin, because curcumin in general seems to be a little bit better absorbed when it's kind of blended with a fatty substance. And uh, so uh, in the supplement industry, they figured out how to blend this with this phosphatidylcholine. And they claim that it helps to really significantly increase the absorption of the curcumin. So that's a good thing, and because of that, I've recommended uh, this form of curcumin supplement in the past. But some new re research that I came across, I wanted to share uh, what this research um, taught us, and that is when this phosphatidylcholine blends with your gut microbiome, so this is the tie-in to why I at first started off with the gut microbiome, is because the gut microbiome breaks down the phosphatidylcholine into a particular substance. And the substance that uh, this phosphatidylcholine breaks down to is called TMAO, um, trimethylamine oxide. And this trimethylamine oxide, when it builds up in the gastrointestinal tract, um, actually just when it builds up in the circulation, once it gets outside of the, the, the uh, gastrointestinal tract, TMAO has been actually shown to increase the chance of arterial placking, which as you know is part of the process of cardiovascular disease. So the breakdown product of this phosphatidylcholine, this TMAO, can build up in the system. If a person is taking this on a you know, long-term basis, this TMA, TMAO can potentially build up in the system and actually increase the chance of arterial placking. And so when I learned that, that was kind of eye-opening for me. Um, and then also, the way that the curcumin, when it's blended with this phosphatidylcholine complex, when the curcumin hits the liver, because remember, once it gets absorbed, which is fine, this, this nutrient was shown to have higher absorption when it's blended with this phosphatidylcholine, which is great, but once it gets absorbed, it then has to go into the liver. And when the curcumin gets to the liver, it goes through that phase two of liver metabolism. Remember I mentioned there's phase one and phase two. In phase two, curcumin goes through a process called glucuronidation. And glucuronidation actually renders the curcumin and the curcuminoids inactive. The metabolites of the breakdown of the curcumin are inactive. So they actually uh, do not provide all the great benefits of immune modulation and anti-inflammation and oxidation. They, uh, they actually don't have those properties. So even though that fat soluble substance allows the curcumin to be absorbed faster and maybe to a, a greater degree, the liver is breaking down the curcumin into these inactive components. So the, the net effect is actually not all that positive. Just to couple that in comparison with another form of, of curcumin that's blended with a, uh, a nutrient um, with a trade name called bioperin. Bioperin is a trade name for an extract of Piper nigrum. Piper nigrum is black pepper. And so this patented form of black pepper, when that is blended with curcumin, a whole different cascade of events happens in your gastrointestinal tract in your circulation, and then most importantly, in your liver. So here's the interesting thing. Remember when I just mentioned that when curcumin hits the liver, it goes to the, glu the glucuronidation phase two liver metabolism, and the curcumin breaks down to an inactive form. So here's what's in interesting. Um, when it's blended with bioperin, this Piper nigrum uh, black pepper extract actually inhibits glucuronidation it stops the liver um, from causing inappropriate breakdown of the curcumin. So it allows the curcumin or the curcuminoids to stay in their very active medicinal form. So that was a really powerful piece of uh, science that really helped me to understand what would be the best form of curcumin for my patients to 
uh, to take because I'm really hoping that it, and thought that this curcumin is staying in the very active curcuminoid form and that's where you get all the great benefits of supporting the immune system, antioxidant, uh, anti-inflammatory. And so now knowing that when it's blended with the bioperin, you, you actually get a net effect of better functioning uh, curcuminoids from the liver because the bioperin inhibits that glucuronate, uh, glucuronidation breakdown of the curcumin. So that's a little bit of sciencey kind of stuff, but uh, hopefully you'll start looking at your curcumin supplements from a little bit different standpoint. And the studies that they used um, to evaluate the curcumin bioperin uh, combination has a trade name of curcumin C3 complex. And this curcumin C3 complex is the one that has uh, the, the proper blend of this uh, Piper nigrum, this black pepper extract. So that seems to be um, the form of curcumin that has the best uh, kind of the net effect of the best um, uh, um, bioactive uh, curcuminoids to really give you the benefits that you get from, uh, from taking the supplement. So hopefully that was useful. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too sciencey, but just to give you the idea that the form of nutrients that we take really, really matters. And as we dig into the science, sometimes it can tell us a little bit different thing than what the bottle might be telling us. Um, so sometimes we gotta listen to the scientists, not the nutrient manufacturers, and they, they kind of fill in some gaps in the story. So hopefully uh, that was good information for you. I'll keep reading you the studies, uh, reading the studies and bringing you the information. Until then, talk to you next time. Keep it real.